Hello everybody, welcome back to Piggleton Flamethrower League. I'm here with Emu, how are you today, sir? Uh, I'm alright. Oh, Alright's better than dead. Well, yeah. well, I don't know. Maybe if I have like permanent negative armor, that'd be uh, better off dead, I think. Yeah, true, true. You know, i just fire here then. Hire a new one. Hire me a new Emu. Let's do it. Alright, bud. Uh, let's resume the game. We're casting from a replay, so uh, if we do go out of sync... Uh, feel free to, uh, to let me know. We can maybe try and move the bar a little bit. But let's uh, start play on three, two, one, play. Okay, so we have lizards versus Norse. Awesome. And the coin flip goes to. God, it doesn't tell you very well. Does it? So the coin flip goes to the Norse team. So they will receive the ball first, putting the lizards on defense. Uh, this is round two, so we m it looks like Sturmer lost a lineman maybe in his first game. So by putting the lizards on defense, you're opening yourself up to like more hits from the lizards? Uh, actually, in my opinion, you this is the best way to play because then you get the first round of blocks in. And against lizards, especially as Norse, because you don't have, particularly this Norse team, because it doesn't have any Dauntless. You I mean, need... it's a it's a it's a gamble though. Like, if if you don't get the good blocks off here, then you mean down the line you're gonna yeah be smacked a bunch more. Absolutely. Extra reroll for the Norse. Very nice. Very nice. And a really deep kick. That's not so great. Starting off by basing the source here and a blitz from an Ulfwerner. <clears throat> it's a good positioning here by uh, Ma Moth has uh, meant that n none of the skinks are available to be blitzed on turn one, which is very important. One advantage that the Norse do, do have... Oh my god. <laughs> well, that's lucky. KO Dosaurus on the first turn. On a one die block as well. That's nuts. Yeah. Not, not to be expected. I mean, here this is this is exactly what you were saying. I mean, he's getting these great first uh, first turn blocks, and now he's gonna have a permanent, well, not permanent advantage, but a strong advantage for the rest of this. Yep, this there is a leveled up berserker as well. So the berserker has mighty blow. So looking for him to kill some skinks in this one. Oh, that was lucky. Picking up the ball there is really big for the Norse, because getting off the sideline like that is a pretty big advantage, because it could have very easily scattered out. So the Norse team are actually set up pretty well here to uh, not take very many punches. They didn't leave any of their players in tackle zones, which means that the only blocks that are going to be forthcoming are from the Lizard's Blitz, which is good. Norse, of course, very low armor. All of them have got block, which makes them somewhat durable. But, you know, if they start getting into a brawl with the lizard men, they should probably not come out on top of that. So, Moth this turn has been completely unable to protect all of his skinks. So the Blitz will probably be used to hurt one of them. Or at least try and hurt one of them then. Yep, here we go. The Blitzer has found a skink and knocked him down. Oh, and knocked oh, him out. Oh, there you go, yeah. Uh, did Mighty Blow do a thing? It did. It made it a knockout rather than a stun. Good job, Mighty Blow. You've done it again. So this is pr looking pretty dicey already for the Lizard Men team. Um, two knockouts in the first two turns is not what you want. Playing against Norse without when you are players down is very difficult. You can already see that Moth's defense has sort of been split up quite heavily. He's got four pieces on the left, three on the right, and the two skinks in the backfield. The one die blocks are obviously going to favor the uh, the Norse quite heavily. A, a, ris Oof. a risky uh, smack on the crack square there, but I mean, no injury. No injury. So. Could have paid off, but didn't. You know, that is the way, unfortunately, these things go sometimes. Oh, well, oh double skulls on the crocs. Rerolled into more skulls. 
that is unfortunate, and that is why generally you don't start your turn with the big guy. And that was a, a risky reroll as well. Yep. Oh, the cops were there with the winner, so. Absolutely. And uh, failed to break armor on the Ulf Werner as well, which is sad. It could have been worth it if you'd managed to take out the Ulf Werner. Hmm. So, another blitz on the Skink. Luckily, he stays on the pitch. Nice. <laughs> it's looking very one-sided right now. Yes. I'd hate to be the Lizardman player. <laughs> yeah, this is not a this is not a good-looking situation. There are still options. I mean, unfortunately, because he didn't manage to stand up any of his source, uh, he's only going to have maybe one block next turn on a blitz. Plus, the Crocs is down. The key here for the lizards is to try and prevent the Norse forming a, a decent cage. Which they can do. They have a free source who can blitz and put a tackle zone on the ball carrier. If he so desires. Okay, they're blitzing elsewhere. Oh man. Both are oh, both that. Oh that. my god. And um <laughs> And the Norse team has four left. Yep. An armor break finally on the Norse. This is the third block on them, so a broken armor is expected. Putting pressure on this budding cage here is very important. Managed to knock down the dangerous berserker, so that's no mighty blow to blitz the skinks next turn. Unless they proceed to stand the skinks next to the jump up mighty blow piece. Which I would argue would be questionable. Because this piece has jump up, which means he can jump up and block without it being a blitz. Like, like that. <laughs> exactly like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now what the Norse... Ooh, finally, a Norse reroll. Excellent. Shame they've, uh, they've got four of them. So, you know. Pretty fast-paced game. We're moving through the turns nice and quickly. Well, we don't have to wait for them to make the decisions. We can just watch the decisions. Exactly, later. exactly. That's one good thing about the replay feature I quite enjoy. Yeah, it burns. It burns through these games like nothing. Yeah, it's it's enjoyable at least. Yeah, it's it's. Oh uh, no! What is this gonna be? Oh good. The Lizardman team can't afford to take any more losses after losing a Saurus so early. Uh, it's so painful. Well, as you know, with your Lizardman, it's it can get quite tough when you start losing the big guys. Well, the thing is, like, if you compare the two teams, every every piece for Lizardman is valuable. For Norse, I mean, you can lose, you can you can lose a lineman here and there. It's it's not going to be, oh, it's yeah. not going to be as felt. Oh, yeah. I agree with you absolutely. I mean, as you as you say, you expect to lose a few skinks, but losing Saurus is not not necessarily on the cards for most lizard no, games. No, I mean, like look how much armor these guys have. It, it, it's it shouldn't happen on on turn one, but no. We'll have to see how this turns out. It's not rolling too well on the injuries either, just getting stuns rather than permanent damage. There doesn't look to be much of a way another, of... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, uh, I was just saying just another uh, skink coming yep. out there. I don't know where you are in the replay, hopefully we're around the yeah, same we're, time. Yeah, we're at the same time, we're at the same time. I was going to say there doesn't seem to be much hope for these skinks in this game. But he only needs to. He needs. It's nice to have two, at least two, and then they're only knocked out. So. Yeah, that's true. No permanent damage, which is nice. And, and basing with the skinks is always a risk. You're tempting fate when you move your skinks into base contact with an enemy player, particularly if that enemy player has block. Excellent. Who do I block from the Ulf Werner? Wonderful. The source and armor is uh, picking up. I'm surprised he decided to go for the uh, fast point here, but... I guess as Norse, you don't get the chance to score very often. So when you do get the chance, it's a good idea to take it. I just skipped through all the celebrations, by the way. So, let's see what happens. Two knocked out, so unfortunately the source is still out. Which is a bit rubbish. 
he, they got a they got a skink back. Yep. I mean that that counts for something. Oh yeah, absolutely. And now they're going to get the chance to block down the Norse line. You know, so hopefully uh, break some in break some armor here and there, score a couple of injuries, get some of these uh, naked men off the pitch. I mean, there's only um. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're doing their, their, their three linemen sacrifice. I mean, that's not... Oh, yeah. That's, that's normal. That's, that's what it's you're completely do. standard. Completely standard for Norse. Quick snap. Very good. That'll help her. Uh... Yeah, they can get a three-die block now on the on the lone alignment, if they wish. Or can they? No, they can't. I can't count. Ignore me. Turns out six is not seven. That is how numbers work. It is, it is. Tackle zones on the ball early, very good. So starting again with the crocs is not a not a move I like. Because if he fail I mean at, I guess at this stage if anyone fails it's a turnover. Because you don't have any rerolls left. This is a very unlucky turn of events for the lizards, not being able to knock down any of the Norse on the line. Yeah. I mean, they're going to get a few more chances, but you re you really count on knocking those guys down, and hopefully injuring or knocking out one or two of them. Let's see, where's the berserker? He's far enough out of the way. Excellent, they managed to knock down a lineman. Unfortunately, he failed to break the armor. They've got a. Pretty good cage setup. It'll be interesting to see how they plan to move forward. And again, failing to knock down Bologna. Yeah, I mean, they have only three turns to get to the one side of the field to the other. Yep. That's uh, really hard to do when none of your skinks have any levels. Uh, yeah, skinks are, one, uh, are a good piece for doing that, but as you say, they don't have any levels. They're still agility three. There's no sprint, there's no sure feet, there's no sidestep. There's a lot of things that these skinks would like to have, which unfortunately they just don't have access to. Let's see if Mighty Blow can uh, sort out this Saurus. No. Oh. I mean, broke it's a, his armor. It's a stun, though. That... Yep. <laughs> that's, that's what you need. Uh, better than not being stunned. I mean, there's only three turns left, too, so. I mean. And this is a pretty solid screen being set up here by the Norse. Throwing the two die block again. Uh, so what would God. you do here as the lizards against this really thick screen? So what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you're basing the players. Making sure these, these Norse screens are not as hard to deal with as Agility 4 screens. And they've managed to knock out the dangerous Berserker. That's really good. Um... You just got to make sure that you end up with Saurus in contact with as many of the Norse as possible. And try and keep your skinks away from contact with as many of the Norse as possible. A screen is only good as long as it can stop being punched. And the Norse are not adept at dodging, unlike the elves. So I played Moth in my first game and employed a very similar strategy to Sturmer here. But the difference between my strategy and with elves and Sturmer's strategy with uh, Norse is the fact that I can reliably dodge away from the tackle zones that he can put on me which Sturmer can't necessarily do so basing as many of the front pieces as possible making sure to get the when, when he's blitzing he needs to be blitzing with an, a, a mind to going forwards that is desperately unlucky going for a one die on yeah. the elf Werner uh, and unfortunately rolling a skull with the crocs. Uh, this crocs is about as useful as yours. Uh, yeah, it was a bad production run for crocs the gores when they came out of their spawn pool. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a bad batch. And now unfortunately there is a blitz on the ball carrier. So this lineman here, Snorri Odder, or whatever his name is. So it's so small, I can't... Yeah, Snorri Odder. Is going to be able to take out. He could have got in for the for the ball carrier if he wanted to get a one die. 
But I mean, he only needs to stall for more turn. That's he, oh, well, there's no th way there's for no this way game to get to the yeah, end. So absolutely not. There's no there's no need. So yeah, unfortunately, Moth was let down a bit by his dice here. Uh, blitzing with the Crocs was probably a mistake because it didn't actually help him mo move forwards. And I would have liked to have seen on turn seven a bit of skink bullshittery if possible. So yeah, like another knockout. Like a, full, a full commitment to skink bullshittery. I think yep. that's what that's what saved me in my game. It was just to uh, invest the skink bullshittery. But I mean. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, skinks skinks are really, really fast, really good pieces. And sometimes, as particularly in a situation like that, where, honestly, there wasn't really a great way of breaking through the screen. Tell me when you get to the brilliant coaching. Uh, I'm, a, I'm at the brilliant coaching. Okay, three, two, one, go. Wonderful. So starting with the crocs again is not a good move. Damn, but he's... <laughs> Uh, but These loner did... rolls are going in his favor, though. They are, but he's wasting rerolls on this. That's the thing. That is the only reason that that is an important roll is because it's the first roll of the turn. If it happened at the end of the turn, it wouldn't necessarily matter so much. These two blocks could have been accomplished. Oh, and unfortunately, another skull and both down. Uh, Nuffle is making his displeasure with the lizards quite clear this game. It seems to me. Um, it's, it's black. It just shows you how strong block is. I mean, yep. until sources yep. get blocked, they're they're not as beefy as they as they look. Oh no! Especially if you're facing block teams. Exactly. Well, Norse Norse are one of the strongest early game teams. They don't scale particularly well because of their low armor, but when they're playing against low value, well, in this case, fresh teams, they can they can really do a lot of damage. Just because the value of each piece is so much higher it, when you consider that they all have block. But also, no one piece is necessarily more valuable than any other. With the exception, in this case, of the Berserker. Speaking of which, the Berserker did not come back after half time. I mean, there's, <laughs> that's some good news at the very least. Yeah. A single, a single die block on the Coxidor. Again, taking the, the single die blocks as Norse is not as risky as it is with other teams because of the amount of block. So here Moth really needs to... Um, he really needs to look at how he's positioning his players on the kickoff. Or rather, on his first turn after the kickoff. Because there's no way the Norse should have been able to get three unchallenged tackle zones on that ball. But they were because he started off doing the risky plays, the dice rolls. He could have very easily moved two skinks up to, uh, to put cover the ball, which would have prevented the Norse from picking it up. A good injury there, knocks out one of the old Furners, but the Apothecary saves him. I didn't see what the original injury was, actually. Was it just badly hurt, or was it something more I think serious? I might have missed a game. Missed it, next, it okay. Gone. So that's an opportunity now for uh, Moth to be aware of, which is the fact that the Apothecary has been used. It's just been so hard for the Sauruses to land a good hit on. Yep. Now, Sturmer has positioned his Norse very, very well in this game. He's not giving the Lizards any real chance to to get to grips. The one die blocks are working out in his favor pretty much invariably. And on top of that, I mean, he's forcing the Lizards to take a lot of one die blocks. Yep. And, I mean, they only have one reroll left. Uh, one to four, I mean. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's very tough when you're using all of your rerolls on the Crocs, and he's lucky because he's used, I think, now two rerolls on the Crocs, and both yeah, of them two, have been he's successful. He's two for two. Which is which is pretty good. Excellent. This is starting to go a bit more in the way it should be with the Norse armor breaking. So the lizards are actually up by a considerable number of pieces here. How many Norse but are left? One not really a two. considerable number of hitters, though. So, well, actually, when you when you look at it, there are six Norse left on the sorry seven Norse left on the field, 
There are uh, uh, three Saurus, sorry, three Saurus, three Skinks, five Saurus, and one Crocs. So that means the uh, strength is actually very much in favor of of the lizards. But I mean, it's not as it's not as strong as you'd expect it to be, being up two players. No. Your skinks are going to hit super hard, and it looks super brawly. So they've managed to make a break for it with a skink. I like this move. Um, forcing some dodge rolls out of the Norse is really good, trying to get their re-rolls out. They're not adept at dodging. I would have liked to have seen the skink at the back of the field, uh, Prince the Symbol, come up field. Because yeah, he's in a very, say he's... He's, in a, he's kind of in a useless position back there. He's not really accomplishing anything. Because he's not going to stop anyone if uh, the Norse managed to steal the ball. But he's also not going to be able to help should um, the two skinks upfield get bogged down. That was, that's some good news. Yep. The dodging blitz, successful, but uh, managed to scatter the ball into the Crocs' tackle zone and the skink did not die. Which is nice. Uh, and he failed a second dodge roll, re-rolled, and success. That's... Uh-oh. Oop. Two tackle zones now on the ball, and blitzing with the crocs. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yep. that coming. <laughs> yep. Using the crocs far too much. Um... It's very tricky because, again, it doesn't matter who he did that with, he would have fallen over. But definitely something for Moth to take away from this game is his use of the Crocs go off first. And his insistence on rolling dice first. There were several moves he could have made there which didn't require dice rolls. Which, of course, are risk-free. You cannot get a turnover unless you roll dice. It was a, it was a very close... So close. Yep. They could have scored and um And un unfortunately not to be. Now there's a good cage built up, but you see what Sturmer did was he used all of his pieces who needed to move before he used any pieces who needed to roll dice. So when he actually had his turnover, it was at the end of the turn after he built his cage, protected and secured the ball. To the point where he even built the cage before he picked up the ball. He did have to invest a reroll in it, but you know, he has four. Yep. <laughs> it didn't matter. Exactly. That's one of the advantages of having a shit ton of rerolls is the fact that you can just splurge him around and not really feel too bad about it. Bonehead on the Crocs. Yeah, that's definitely your Crocs. I seem to remember a similar thing happening in my game against Moth. He, he, his croc, the Croxagors, as you say, it's been it was a bad spawn. It bad, it was a bad bad year for Croxagors. So, getting enough Saurus into the cage now that they have to they have to roll some dice here. They have to do something about it. The one die blocks continuing to fall in favor of the Norse. I don't think he's had a turnover on a one die block yet. He's had two turnovers on two die against. Good choice to hand off. Moving this, trying to move the skink around. The skink will stay up, which is pretty important because that uh, limits where this Norseman can go. I mean, now he just needs to burn his, uh, burn his rerolls. Yep. Oh, well, he's doing he it with the dodging, and that's going to be it. Yep. <laughs> So the ball carrier is not safe. There is a blitz available from the source, which unfortunately did not go so well. Again, Moth doing the dice rolling things before the not the safer plays. So he could have tried to get his source, his sorry, his source, his Croxagor up. He could have tried to move the Skinks and the source back from down the field. No injuries yet on the Norse, I believe. Is that so? Yeah, it's all just knocks out. So another pretty barren game in terms of SPP for this Lizard team. Which is not I mean, good I for I feel like something might be coming up, though, on, on the other hand. I mean, there's still a few more turns left. 
I'm sure there might be an injury. Oh, uh, I see we've uh, fallen out of sync again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm psychic. E Emu don't, from don't the future. Me. Emu from the future. Okay, I won't question you, Senpai. T tell me more. One die block. Very nice. This makes a pretty simple blitz out to score. I believe he has the movement. Yep, he has the rerolls. And he runs it, runs it in. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so you're, you're down two. Now you just want to score some injuries. Yeah, then... the, the, this this game, from Moth's point of view, is is out of the ballpark. You've only got two turns to score. You might score. You might be able to score one, get some points, get some experience. It's just unfortunate, really. Um, a few, a few basic mistakes early on. Costing him the rerolls he could have used later in the in the game to actually make the to make the difference because this could have been quite easily a one one at this point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was so close. It's just that that Croxagor, bad batch. Yep. So uh, I'm stopped on cheering fans. Are you there as well? Or did yeah, you already? Go. Perfect. Wonderful. So a very deep kick that probably puts pay to any chance. Starting with the Crocs again. At this point as well, it doesn't matter because he's out of rerolls, but it's just something to bear in mind for future games. I I don't like starting with my big guy or anyone who has a negative trait like Lona because some, some it's just hits, dangerous. Though. Yeah, no injuries. he's not he's not rolling the dice he needs on the armor or the injuries. It's all stuns all day. Any of the skinks for fouls if you want to uh, end your turn that way. Yeah. I don't know about Moth in terms of fouling. I don't think he's a particularly foul happy chap. And, you know, it's just fouling on the skinks at this point. Kind of. It's alright because at least you make them safe. You know, because if they get sent off, then they can't be hurt anymore. Some uh, vanity SVP toss is going out. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, I mean, he fluffed it. But hey, the pass worked, which is unusual. Stunties aren't so good at the old passing. So, yeah, so... Chances are Sturmer won't stand up his guys on the line, because he doesn't want to get punched anymore. Hiding his Ulf is behind other players, the linemen. There's just going to be one chance here for Moth to get some SPP out this game. Some more tries on the throws. Yep. They're just going to call it a day, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and he just can't catch it. But the funny thing is, they're doing, they're getting the difficult part. The pass is the difficult part. They're just fluffing the catch. So they open themselves up to a blitz here, which is, I don't know why. Yep. It's not a wise move, but, you know, it, it, it happens. And it, oi. There you go. There we go. No harm, no foul. Exactly. He still had two rerolls as well. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that the dice definitely fell in favor of of the Norse there. I mean, he had four rerolls and he had a lot of block, so I mean but, that adds to how much the uh, the dice fell into his favor. Were there two injuries? Oh, there were some injuries actually, weren't there? Two injuries, so some SPP. Big Bama Skink got a got the MVP. That's nice. No, no lasting injuries. No. I mean, for a loss, it's not. It's, it's not too not bad. The worst. I mean, it could have been. It should have been a tie. Uh, I think honestly, the biggest the biggest thing that Moth can take away from this is using using his rerolls effectively rather than being forced to waste them on ultimately pointless things. Yeah, you know, just mind, mind your Crocs. I yeah, guess. yeah. Basic, basic, that is the biggest single mistake that I saw from Moth in this game. Um, I don't think Sturmer. I think Sturmer played a very good game. I honestly don't think I saw anything I didn't really like from, from Sturmer. I wouldn't have probably rolled as many of the two die against as he did. But at the same time, or, like, or as many as the ones. I mean, two die against and the ones were both well, uh, pretty you, risky. Well, you know, when you're playing Norse, you you're it's like playing dwarves. You take those dice rolls because 
statistically, you only fail on a one. You only fail on a skull. Particularly yeah. when, you're, when you're playing against a um, team that doesn't have block. I do had the re-rolls, although exactly. I don't usually re-roll ones, but... No. Um, a few times where also Moth put his skinks into a dangerous position. But that didn't actually end up biting him at all. There were no permanent injuries or no injuries at all. Yeah, no injuries at all for the uh, lizard men, which is pretty lucky. So, you know, it's just another neutral game. Getting a few SPP up. Going into game three, it should be quite quite easy to level up a couple of his players. Yeah, well, there's this One game. Up. I mean, yep. the, only, for... the last thing is that the Lyman got a... He got player, player of the game. Good, and, MVP. Uh, MVP, and uh, yeah, Skink, he got it. Yeah. You know, be, you'd rather have it on the source, but you know, whatever. It's a fast start for this Norse team, and that's kind of worrying for the rest of us in this division, because Norse... Not, as I said, Norse are really, really powerful at low team value anyway. So when you're all, or when you're getting level ups on a Norse team at low team value, it's uh, it's quite scary for the rest of us hanging around the 1k mark. But with with low um, with low armor value, there's a there's a good chance to get injured or they'll die or be removed from the pitch or whatever. Exactly. So right. Well, thank you very yeah. much for joining me, sir. <laughs> Take care.